What's up guys, it's Eventon here, and it has been a long time. Too long of a time, matter of fact, since I've uh, last made a video for you guys. Sorry, I did take a bit of a break. It was honestly much needed, just personally, but also just had some other stuff going on. Um, I'm glad to be back and making content again, and honestly, sometimes with EVE Online, you just need a good break to really appreciate how great this game uh, really, really is. I know it's been the better part of probably two and a half, three months maybe a bit longer than that i kind of forgot uh, but i have been back for the better part of a week now and i'm super excited to be back i actually picked a perfect week to come back because now we have the capsuleer day stuff going on um, there's all kinds of updates that i haven't really caught up with like battleships got a buff uh, kind of like the the fallout from a lot of the industry updates and on top of that of course the uh, fan fest that's been happening on ccp which had a ton of information i haven't even caught up with all of it but i'm gonna kind of go back just to my um you know back to my roots doing a little bit of pve content before i start getting really back in the swing of things doing some pvp on wormhole space as well as some other aspects that i just enjoy doing and even online in general so um i did watch a couple other content creators do these um do these sites sorry i gotta close a few of these windows these are just um windows it's just a habit that i have a ton of these windows up at the same time um because i'm usually doing wormhole pvping and flying around and stuff like that but um it seems like the Drake does really, really well. So I did do the Cyclone not too long ago. And that one did all right, but it just seemed really, really slow. The amount of damage output um, seemed to be a little bit on the low end. So what we're actually trying this time around is the Drake Navy issue, which I know is very much overkill for these sites, but I do want to come out uh, eventually with some uh, Alpha Clone fits or ships as well to do these sites but for right now just wanted to stick to something that's probably a little bit overtuned a little bit overpowered for these sites um, just to kind of get back in the swing of things um, right now i'm using the drake navy issue i'll also link the cyclone fit that i used prior but i'll also show you guys the current um, drake navy fit that i'm using as well so uh, using a shield command burst uh, got three large shield extenders as well as a shield recharger multi-spec uh, target painter and you can see the low slots also putting in some uh, defense core shield purgers as well so um, i really really like this layout it's honestly like pretty afk friendly like i said before i do think the um the tank on these sites are a bit over tuned at least for the high sec stuff i haven't done any of the low sec which is pretty typical for ccp to make those the most difficult sites uh, to actually do but Right now, I am just using, I pretty much just started using the cheapest ammo possible, which is just uh, Kaldari Navy uh, Inferno Heavy Missile ammo, as well as just like the Rage for the most part. So, um, yeah, these sites, I've actually done quite a few of these so far. This is the fit that I've been, I actually enjoy doing the most. I did try a Brutix Navy issue the other day as well. Um, damage output on the boss is amazing, but the only issue is, is kind of like you really have to face ram a lot of the, uh, the orbiting Cerberuses. Um, as well as some of the icky Teresas and things like that so um, that the ship was a little bit more difficult to navigate around i will admit it's kind of nice being a little bit more active in that ship versus the drake because um, what i'm doing right now is just very afkable so it's actually pretty easy easy to use for the most part but i've been using uh the drake maybe quite a bit and i've been enjoying that so yeah for the last week or so i've just been kind of getting acclimated with the uh with with just looking at uh, the overview again, getting used to uh, my bookmarks, my overview, uh, other aspects of EVE Online. And you guys know as well as I do is that whenever you take a break from EVE Online, is even for, gosh, sometimes even for a couple of weeks, you come back and it feels like you're just relearning a lot of stuff or that you're always an extra second or two or even, even five to 10 seconds slower when it comes to uh, looking things up or performing certain actions and stuff. But I feel like I kind of picked it up pretty quickly. I had some uh, nice court mates um, kind of fill me in on a lot of updates and things that have happened um, in EVE Online since I've last played as well. So so after we kill this, we're going to switch over to the uh, Smuggler. So I actually ended up siding with the DED. I did not really like the rewards that I saw for the Smugglers. So if you actually sided with the Smugglers and you're fighting DED, a lot of the Smugglers' um, rewards seem to have like cool looking i mean all the skins look really cool but all the all the ships that you got skins for on the smuggler side was for cloaked ships so it was like the crane the panther uh, all these things that are typically cloaked so you can't really like look at or kind of appreciate the skin itself so i ended up actually going with ded plus i did like some of their uh bonuses that you got on the boosters that you could get uh for like the login rewards and stuff which we'll cover here in a second um now on a room like this typically um even though the Serbs do a lot of damage, I typically lock up 
the the trig ships first. So I usually start with the Draugr, the Icky Trissa, and work my way down. Because if you do leave that Draugr or that Icky alone for a long period of time, um, that damage that starts ramping will start performing at like cruiser, even battle cruiser levels of damage. So uh, I actually typically like taking out the Draugrs as well as the Icky Trissas first, and then I take out um, usually the uh, Serbs shortly after. Go and take that out. Always make sure to keep a close eye on your drones. I'm actually utilizing the uh, Kaldari Navy Vespas mostly because they have the biggest shield buffer of any of the uh, medium drones, at least for like the uh, faction drones and stuff. So usually when they start getting shot, they have enough of a buffer that I can recall them. They can regenerate their shields while they're hanging out in my drone bay. I did try using, you know, Hammerhead 2s or some other. Uh, faction drones as well but they tended to started losing armor once i recalled them you know in the drake navy and even the the brutix navy they don't have a massive drone base so when you lose a couple drones here and there before you know it sometimes after about six or seven sites i noticed i had half of as many drones as i did and i didn't even have enough drones to fill up my uh my bay so after a while i had to either restock or sometimes i would actually buy a couple extra drones put them in my cargo and then after i lost those drones i would dock up re-put those drones into my drone bay and then undock again so um, yeah, so make sure you just keep a close eye on your Vespas. You could typically find out if a ship is targeting your drones if they have a yellow box, kind of like we see here around the Serb. So if it's just a red circle, that means they're targeting you. But if it's a yellow box, I believe they're also targeting um, your drones as well. So we can see the Serb flying around. That's actually a really cool skin. I never even like looked at some of these ships really closely. Um, but that's actually a really, really cool skin for the server. I'm not sure what that one is um, in real life, or at least like in the game for the most part. So, so right now, just focusing down the serb, I will end up locking up some of these other ships. And I probably actually should switch ammo to the uh, faction variant because I'm shooting some of the smaller ships. Using the rage ammo isn't ideal for some of the uh, bigger ships, but using uh, rage on the little stuff is not ideal either so i'm just going to take these down honestly at this point if i really wanted to i could probably just afk my drones just occasionally target paint um the the, the forget that they are locking up as well we're gonna take out the hyena here so again at this point i don't think any of these frigates can even do enough damage to take down my Kaldari navy vespa so again i could probably just afk this for the most part but i do want to kind of speed this up as we're running this site And that was actually one thing I did want to show you guys, which was the reward. So again, these scan booster rewards and stuff like that are kind of cool, but I really like these uh, armor boosters as well as the turrets, uh, scan boosters. But there's this apprehension one, which seemed really interesting. Warp scrambler range, 8%. So warp disruptor and scram range was 8% and plus two strength for warp disruptors and scramblers. That is just absolutely insane so basically these scramblers or at least these boosters are giving you something equivalent to what a oh gosh i forgot the name of the ship i think it's right here the mollusk navy issue so as you can see that miscellaneous bonus is a plus two scramble strength to all um, warp scramblers um, but this also does disruptors too so it says um, this is actually that bonus is actually better than the one the mollusk navy gives because it actually gives um, I mean, this also gives extra optimal range, but that miscellaneous bonus only goes for scrams, not for disruptors. So um, it's kind of insane that they're actually giving away that as a bonus. Let me actually double check that because I want to make sure I didn't mess that up. That's armor. That's the apprehension. Let me look that up. Yeah, it says disruptor and scram range. Warp scram strength for disruptors and scrams. Yeah, that is just crazy. So now you can have what? scramblers basically or disruptors performing at the level of scramblers you know you can't interrupt uh, micro jump drives and things like that but i mean the fact that you can put essentially three points on a single uh, disruptor is pretty crazy let's go ahead and recall the drones and take the gate <clears throat> and i'll load up the rage here the thing i do like about these sites is that these sites are pretty straightforward you're you really only have to take on three waves even though it's technically four those two waves on that initial warp in as well as this initial wave and then when the next wave comes it's just the battleship and i typically just face ram it um again unless there is draugers or other ships so actually this time around we actually have two draugers as well as an icky teresa now what i want to actually do here is probably take out the draugers because i can actually take my time with those or i can actually take them down pretty quickly i should say 
So that should probably take no time. Even though I think the Icky Tris, it does ramp um, a bit higher, I do think the, the total amount of damage I will be tanking if I focus the Icky first um, will be greater. I could be wrong on that assessment again. It's It's been quite a while since I've uh, uh, played EVE Online. I do think probably the Icky will, the ramping will start hurting a lot, but we do have enough damage here that it's not much of a bother. And again, like I said, I, I really do think that the... Uh, the Drake Navy is probably a little bit overtuned for this side, especially the way I have it fit. The tank might be a little bit on the high side, so um, if you're really worried about people like stealing your wrecks or stealing your loot on these uh, these sites for like the battleship, because this, as you notice, has no prop mod. We can't actually move any faster than 125, uh, 225 meters per second. So someone, you know, in this next room, as you'll see, will probably get webbed. We're getting all the E-War possible um, when we are fighting that boss wave. And so ideally, if you do have an afterburner or a micro warp drive, um, probably an afterburner. Uh, I don't think, never really ran into any cap issues at all in this ship, but I bet if you did run a, like a 50 MN micro warp drive plus some other things, Ooh, my drones are getting focused pretty heavily. So shift R to recall them. Probably just focus this Raptor first. And probably go for the serb here and the other thing you do want to do is actually reload so i've noticed that um right now the boss wave isn't going to spawn but if i do kill this serb and the boss wave is going to start warping at that point i actually don't need to even finish off this last uh this last frigate but i would suggest though is that uh, you actually do reload your your hams your heavy assault missile launcher just before that next boss wave. So pretty much right when I'm done with this Cerberus, I think I'm gonna reload. Cause I believe the last couple times I did fight the boss, you do wanna have at least, uh, gosh, I'd probably say, depending on your skills, probably 40 ammo loaded. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's recall our drones. And the other thing I like to do too is have my drones actually inside my drone bay when a new wave spawns. Cause typically when a, when new, when a new wave warps in, Pretty much immediately focus your drones. Not entirely sure why that is. So I'm just going to lock up the boss here. Actually going to give a few seconds to basically start, quote unquote, drawing aggro to myself instead of my drones. And then now we're going to start applying the damage. Luckily, we actually ended up getting the Panther, I believe, which I think is probably the easiest boss to get. Um, in my opinion, the hardest one to get is the, I believe it's like the Scorpion where it actually starts jamming you out, which isn't that big of a deal because it's the only thing that you should be focusing on. Um, but it does do heavy newts as well as some other things. So I don't know why I was approaching this other ship, but should be approaching this uh, smuggler underboss. So as you can see at this point, we're, we're taking all the E-War. We're getting uh, disrupted, we're getting webbed, we're getting target painted, we're getting neutered, we're taking it all. But um, as you again, you can see the cap seems fine. I don't think we've even got below 50% shields this entire time, but again, this is probably one of the easier bosses in my opinion. Um, probably because its damage output's a bit higher, but its defense is super low, so it's not as much of a slugfest. Um, also, if this wave did have any Kikis, no, not Kikis, if this wave did have any Draugr spawn, I would actually kill the Draugrs before the boss, because if you have Draugrs or any of the Trig ships that spawn with the boss wave, I mean, they can really start ramping on you, so I actually take those out uh, which as you've seen before it only takes 10 or 15 seconds to kill those draugers um, but then once they're actually removed from the field and then i focus on the boss because that ramping damage from the trick ships uh, really adds up so nice we actually ended up killing the boss claim the reward we really didn't get much here but that smuggler blockade um booster here it's actually really interesting it gives you stasis weapon fire resistance didn't even know that was a stat to be quite honest that you're like w resisting webs i guess you are four percent faster if you are getting webbed by something so if you let's say it's a 50 percent web does it only affect you 44 percent or i should say 46 percent instead it's kind of interesting and this immunity to cargo scanners thing that's um super interesting as well because that is actually the same effect as the blockade runners that they get, which arguably, I mean, it helps in some instances. I mean, usually you're cloaked, so usually you're hard to lock and scan anyway. 
So I'm not entirely sure why that's, some, you know, in my mind, not entirely sure why that's even a thing on the blockade runners. And plus, they're actually squishy enough to where tornadoes can kill you. Um, I actually remember doing a video a long time ago talking about uh, tornado ganking. I did have a video on that. And there was a point in when I was experimenting with that where I was just sitting on a gate for about three hours. And I'm like, I need something to shoot. So I will shoot a blockade runner. But Anyway, yeah, that was just a long random tangent. I think it's not a typical uh, Eventon EVE Online video unless I go on a tangent on a completely unrelated topic. But um, yeah, I am back, guys. I do want to keep making content. I'm super excited for the Capsular update and the rest of what 2022 holds for us in EVE Online. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys take care and I'll catch you guys next time.